Right, for those that, for those who haven't seen this method before, probably all of you, I use a different method of propagation. I use it, call it division. Right, that, it's, it's one of two methods I use. The whole objective is to not spill honey. Now, it doesn't always quite work out like that, but uh, it's a long way better than cutting a hive through the middle. I, I, I try to end up with, with a box that the bees grow as they naturally grow because they are keen to grow upwards. The brood starts at the bottom, grows upwards. If you put a piece of brood over an empty space, it will never go down to the base. It will dome underneath. But if you start it at the base, at least the structure is down there. The bees make their decision what happens from there. But if you start it at that point, it does at least come uh, come upwards. Now the, th the, the process is to take the top box, top level, and the brood in this case is right right up to that inspection panel. And because there's an inspection panel on it, uh, I know the brood is there. The challenge is just what, what stage the brood is going through the separators. The, the, the hope is that the separators grip that brood and, and it divides at that point. Now, it normally is just It's always a little bit of a, an unknown with these old boxes. I say that because I've used many sorts of separators. You, those who have seen my current boxes will see, oh, I've got some Vegemite. Current boxes will see And that's done it. Well, you can't get any better than that, actually. But any box would do that. Lift to come up high above. Uh, if any, anyone would, wants to come and have a look, this is Tetragonula Hocking's Eye. Uh, I have have actually got it at the bands in front. Uh, now, that's what every single speed demonstrator wants to do a division split at, that's the stage. It doesn't always happen that way because this advancing front and the gap between the two stages, the emerging brood and the, the brood just being laid, there's maybe a centimetre or two centimetres there. It can, can, can vary their intimal whiskers and biting. Uh, and uh, the, the, but it will always naturally split at this stage. But with this design, if it wasn't at that stage, this advance in front could be any, anywhere right down to the bottom of the involucrum to right up at the top. But the separators grip onto uh, the uh, the brood and will part uh, the, the brood at that point. So it's not dependent on this uh, structure. Now I can hear bees in my PA system. Can too. 
Now I have actually done a little bit of a change in my boxes and this is not quite as ideal as it could be because there would be a little bit of pressure on that. A few bees up the nose. Now normally what I what I actually haven't done and there is the top of the brood. This is how I knew that the brood came right through to the top. Because I snuck a peek. Put another separator in. Now I will put the old inspection panel back on. They're easy to replace. This resin is defensive resin, so I'm going to take it off. There is a B space. I say defensive resin. The bees have done something to it. And it's not had wax. Uh, no one can tell me what the composition of that is just yet. And the researcher who was starting to work in this field is back home in Italy and sadly uh, I'm getting a few bees stuck in there. It's Now this box, slightly different in the top, I've had added a rebate to here. Whole purpose of it is to give the bees somewhere to put that resin. Uh, I'm being a little bit greedy here because I want to be able to collect it. Just not sure about markets and market values just yet. You know, somehow or other the the cover is gone, but that that one is finished. This one is close to finished. I will need an inspection panel, so I'm just. Oh, here we go. The sun is a little bit too bright here. I'd, I'd much rather have some shade. The hive can take it, but the brood not. This tape the only place I use tape now is around the inspection panel and unfortunately I can't get 20mm tape so 
sells just as well this stuff tears. But that basically is it. It's now up to the bees to sort themselves out. One will have a coin, the other one has to make a coin. Uh, there's a bit of debate about success rates. I happen to be a realist. I would never claim 100%. But because I think naturally I would expect 75%. In other words, half of those that don't have the queen that have to produce one half of them will be successful but because I can see what they're doing I can see if they haven't got it I can do something about it so it's up to me So it's, it's up to me, it's up to me to make it 100%. Uh, there will, if there are going to be failures, it'll be because they don't requeen, uh, and because I don't react quickly enough, and the numbers decline with the developing group. Has anyone got any questions? I'll know that I'll know there's a queen in there within a month. Within a month. Mm -hmm.